Hey, and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick. Uh, my name is Chris. And Nick, what do we got in store today? Today, Chris, uh, we are talking about the FCA and their struggles with the sheer number of uh, of crypto asset firm applications. It's an interesting one, really, isn't it? Mm. Uh, to just know that they're just underwhelmed, uh, well, not underwhelmed, overwhelmed uh, with the sheer number of uh, applications coming through. So we're gonna get into a bit of that and see what's going on there. We'll talk about the market because uh, believe it or not, we're back over a trillion dollars uh, You know, uh, and we'll talk a little bit maybe about the bear market that we were in, Chris. <laughs> oh yeah, like I'm a, I'm a survivor. I hope everyone else is a survivor of the, of the severe bear market of 2021. Uh, so yeah, we'll get into a bit of that as well. I think it's going to be an interesting one, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right. So as always, guys, if you find it useful, informative, you guys know what to do. Smash up that like button. Keep Chris nice and perky for the live stream. And uh, if you're not subscribed, do go ahead and subscribe. By subscribing, you will be kept up to date with all of the videos and live streams that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Right. Shall we jump over to the markets and just see what's going on to start with? Talk about the bear market, get into the FCA, and then uh, see what's going on in the live chat. Yeah, let's do it, Nick. Fantastic. So Korean market cap, uh, let's just give it a quick refresh, make sure it's got the most up to date data. But as you can see, guys, uh, we gained that uh, 200 and some billion dollars that, uh, you know, I guess the you know people sold in fear. Um, so ultimately, we're at one point zero six trillion dollars, uh, 131 billion in volume. Uh, and Bitcoin's dominance at 69.1. Chris, we have eight thousand two hundred and fifty nine cheeky cryptocurrencies out there that we are not invested in uh, that many. So yeah, we're, we're a handful of that. If we shoot down the list, uh, there's a mixture of reds and greens. Uh, so let's call out some of uh, the big movers, right? So Bitcoin 10% today, Ethereum 10% today, Polkadot's 23% up today, Litecoin 9%, Cardano 4.8, uh, Chainlink 8.4, Stellar 2.5, Theater 4.9, VeChain 3.9, uh, we have Zillica at 3.3, Elrond 11.4, Algorand 5.9, 2% for the Graph, 9% for Hedera. We have 6% Harmony, 12% for Fetch AI, 5% for Polymath, 5% for Solve, and 9% for API3. Now on the negative side, we have V4, uh, we have Singularity Net, and we have Zcash, uh, we also have XRP. So ultimately, more green than red, which is nice to see. So a little bit richer. Um, and obviously we'll get into, what did I do with it? I think it's this one. Yes, uh, CNN business. Bitcoin plunges more than 20% in three days. Now it's in a bear market. Uh, I survived that bear market, Chris. Did you survive that bear market? Only just, Nick. Only by the with skin just of my teeth. skin of your teeth. You got through it. You got through it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and and this is what we were talking about the other day, wasn't it? It was all like, the the fud that was out there. You know, Bitcoin's going down. You know, this is all after the the shenanigans on on Sunday and Monday. Um, but look where we are now. <laughs> absolutely, um, absolute Remarkable. nonsense uh, that usually follows the mainstream media around. Uh, and yes, we survived. And I think most people in this stream survived and held strong through that uh, that that three day nightmare of a bear market um so let's get into the fca right so the fca struggles with the surge of crypto asset firm applications which is just a bit crazy if you think about it i mean they put a deadline out there for everyone to apply and god they just weren't prepared for people to apply <laughs> it's just insane so let's get into this right so there are only three uk based crypto asset firms that have actually registered by the uk financial markets regulator in time for its own january 10th deadline so uh, you know amidst the signs that the regulator is struggling to process a wave of applications so um, from the date firms carrying out specific crypto asset activities in the uk um, have needed to register um, with the sea in order to comply with the country's anti-money laundering rules right so pretty basic stuff um it could, of course it comes with a nice hefty fee for applying but we'll get to that in a moment the uh, specific uh, activities include running a cryptocurrency exchange operating a cryptocurrency atm and offering cryptocurrency custody services so under the fca's own rules anyone conducting these activities 
and failing to register can be prosecuted. So in 2017, the UK government brought uh, in new money laundering, terrorist financing and transfer of funds regulations uh, to in, uh, implement uh, the European Union's fourth directive of on money laundering or the AML D4 for those who are really savvy with it. Um, so the three uh, crypto asset firms that made the FCA's January 10th cut are uh, cryptocurrency exchange um, Gemini, 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 I'm going to go with Gemini, Gemini, that one. I don't use it. I don't know. Digital asset exchange, uh, Ancrax, don't know that one either. Uh, and crypto focused fintech, uh, Zyglu, Ziglu, Ziglu, yeah, Zig I'm going to go with Ziglu. So those are the only three. So everyone else, uh, you didn't make the cut. Mm -hmm. So uh, all three were likely authorized by the FCA, uh, something that uh, may have uh, aided the processing of their applications. Okay, so um, basically uh, Gmini, Gmini and Ziglu uh, are uh, uh, recorded uh, on the FCA's uh, register for electronic money institutions uh, and Ancrax uh, has um, a multi-lateral uh, trading facility. Okay, custodian and a broker. So, okay, fine. So uh, at least 90, okay, so there's only three that have been approved, but 90 other crypto asset firms submitted applications to the FCA for registration ahead of their 16th of December 2020 deadline uh, and have now been placed on a temporary registration regime by the regulator. Um, so basically the temporary um, registration enables firms to continue to trade uh, with the UK until the 9th of July 2021, pending the SEA's decision on their application. So they set the application, unable to actually, you know, deal with the sheer volume. So they did three out of 93. I mean, that's a, that's a piss poor attempt at, uh, at regulating, in my opinion. But there we go. Um, so applications uh, for the SEA registration, which cost up to 10k, uh, are £10,000 sterling per application. Um, so yeah, they've netted themselves a nice tidy sum, yet unable to actually facilitate the uh, you know the regulation itself or the the uh, application process. So um, need to provide details, and so basically, you know, the the actual application uh, requires details uh, or detailed information to the regulator in all areas of their business activities and ownership. So, so the FCA um, requires uh, submissions uh, to cover applicants' uh, program of operations, business and marketing plans, uh, details of beneficial owners and key personal data. Um, so, you know, details of key IT systems, governance uh, arrangements and firms, uh, anti-money laundering or AML, uh, counter-terrorist uh, finance, that's the CTF frameworks, right? So relatively basic stuff, nothing in there really uh, should be, you know, difficult to, to, to you know, uh, allow for an application. So firms seeking registration uh, also have to share all their crypto assets, uh, public keys and wallet addresses, right? Uh, on its uh, website, uh, the FCA reminded uh, customers, uh, consumers that uh, it did not uh, authorize firms trading in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Um, instead, it only regulates them for money laundering purposes. Um, so the distinction leads to different outcomes if a firm disappears or uh, defaults uh, customers, right? So that's a totally different thing. If you buy um, these types of crypto assets, uh, you are likely to have access to uh, the financial ombudsman services or financial service compensation scheme uh, if something goes wrong, the FCA said. Uh, it warned consumers that cryptocurrencies are high risk, speculative purchases, um, and that if they buy crypto assets, clients should be prepared to lose all their money. All their money, Chris. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. So the UK uh, financial regulator has taken a consistently uh, a hard line view on crypto assets. Uh, late last year, uh, it went ahead with a ban on exchange traded no, uh, EN, uh, ETN issuer, uh, issuers and derivatives firm um, from offering crypto asset trackers uh, to the general public, even though 97% of the respondents to an earlier consultation paper had opposed such a prohibit, prohibit, I can't even say the word, forbidden it. They just forbid. 
Um, so uh, commenting uh, on the, the slow pace of registration, um, <laughs> James uh, Burney, a partner at UK-based firm uh, Gunnar Kook, uh, who specialises in crypto assets, said it's been a perfect storm. The SC FCA has had a lot of applications and we've had uh, obviously the virus and Brexit uh, at the same time. Some of those applications haven't been uh, to the right quality and others have uh, been late. And for many firms, uh, it's the first experience dealing with the FCA. So the deadline um, for existing firms was uh, June the 30th, uh, which gave uh, FCA over six months to review and approve applications. The FCA managed to review three. Uh, for whatever reason, they didn't manage to do the remainder. Uh, one of the firms uh, in temporary registration uh, you know, Sir Liddy, uh, yeah, said on Twitter. And, you know, it's very disappointing to see that kind of thing, right? You know, ultimately, uh, they're unable to actually do what they're supposed to do. It's very, very frustrating. Um, but, yeah, so, Chris, what, what's your takeaways on all of that? Well, you know, I, as you know, I, I, I deal with the, the FCA uh, regularly. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty slow. So uh, it doesn't come as any surprise to, to me at all. Um, I, I think particularly uh, with the, the lockdown and all of that in the UK, that, that probably hasn't helped them. Um, but yeah, it isn't unusual for, for things to take six to eight months for the FCA. Um, but hey-ho, that is what it is. It is what it is, unfortunately. So Chris, this is opening up the, the favourite part of the live stream um, you know, for the next 45 minutes or so. Do you want to, to go into the live chat and see what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Um, before I do, don't forget to mash that like button. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely go ahead and mash that like button for Chris. You know how he appreciates it. it keeps him nice and perky, keeps him alert and alive. Um, and yeah, I think he appreciates it. Uh, and furthermore, you know, if you're not subscribed, do go ahead and subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you're going to be kept up to date with all of the videos and live streams uh, that we do here at Cheeky Crypto, which is which is a lot, guys. Super. Okay, right. So uh, ADA is going to explode, apparently. Uh, so yeah, we love ADA, and uh, I've definitely got to agree with you on that. We've got uh, DAI versus USD, whatever coin, please. Um, what have we got here? Uh, Mac. McAfee likes uh, DAI, and if he shot someone uh, with it, be over a dog. So he might not be so bad after all. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. He lost me completely. How bullish are we feeling today? Uh, very bullish, aren't we, Nick? I mean, yeah, looking very, at very the... bullish because if I flick over to the desktop, Chris, here's Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. taken over a key area, right? So. This is the 78.6 Fibonacci level, for those who don't know. Uh, this was a key area to get above, and we are above it currently. So uh, this basically is a, a good bullish indication, guys, that things are going to start heating up for Bitcoin again um, and powering up towards those higher levels, right? So uh, as we look up here, we obviously have that uh, that 48K, that 60K, that 50, uh, sorry, 71K, 78K. There's so many levels that uh, this Fibonacci is potentially showing us that uh, things could get very interesting for Bitcoin uh, in uh, in the very near future. Now we're above that uh, that seventy uh, eight Fibonacci level, so really want to pay out attention for very 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 bullish at the minute, Chris. Yeah, and I mean, um, I mentioned the other day it was sort of fifty fifty, wasn't it? Whether it was going to go up or whether it was going to retrace. Uh, it went to the upside, and then you know I also mentioned at the same time there was a a point in which it could still go down. Um, yeah, basically, it was this level here, right? So yeah. that's seventy percent, right? If we were, if we stayed below it, when we were potentially going to be looking at a downward uh, trend, right? That that happened would have happened over here uh, when we hit it. But uh, we actually went above that line, which basically now is kind of indicating that we're going to go to that direction, which is going to be really interesting. Um, so I think there's a little bit of indecision at the minute. Um, but, you know, give it some time, get those uh, those balls back in control. Or we're going to see some really, really good stuff. I'm so confident um, that uh, we're going to see a new all-time high uh, for Bitcoin. Yeah, um, so am I, Nick. 
buzzing. Um, and then we've got Bagsful just received a threatening email, laugh out loud, uh, that's due to the data breach uh, at Ledger. Um, so yeah, I've seen a few of those on, on Twitter today, um, threatening to come around your house if, yeah, um, just report it to the police. To be honest, I think it's, you know, they could be anywhere in the world, right? Um, yeah, it's just terrible. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I really don't know what to say because I just, you know, I think some of these people are just terrible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, you know... I would say like nine times out of ten, most of the time, they're just empty threats, aren't they? They are empty uh, threats. So a mass email that goes out to, you know, thousands of email addresses on the hope that someone bites. Exactly. Um, but that doesn't change, obviously, the 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 nervousness, I guess, of being in that situation. Um, I mean, I, I mentioned on, on a previous live stream that I've had issues with with neighbours and gangs outside the house, and you know, a lot of the time it would be when I sort of arrived home with my my three year old daughter at the time. Um, you know, when I'm on my Todd with my three year old, um, so I, I do understand what that feels like. It isn't a nice feeling whatsoever. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, everything's everyone that at home's feeling okay. Bags full. Um, Okay, so uh, especially the social scoring one, uh, which is worldwide soon. Not sure what that's about. Um, right, let me go a little bit further down there because I'm right at the top somewhere. Yeah, so there was a one comment uh, that I saw which was talking about, you know, what do we think Bitcoin's going to do? Do you think it's going to explode after the SEC drama? And yes, yeah, so I brought up this example from Kin. Uh, Kin was a cryptocurrency um, from Kick Interactive. And they were sued by the SEC for the exact same reason as uh, basically, you know, selling unregistered securities. And they were found guilty. Uh, they were fined five million. And straight after that lawsuit had been uh, completed and they were found guilty, uh, it went up uh, in seven days up. 961 percent okay and then in that 66 day period it had a high achieving 1900 percent growth so i'm very confident that xrp is going to absolutely smash it um once this whole thing is uh, gets put past us now on the xrp chart here if we were to just go ahead and grab our price from our current level and let's just assume we're going to stay in this zone uh, and we were to shoot this up just that initial kind of 900 percent right what would that potentially look like um, let me just mm. grab this and keep it going because 900% is actually quite a way up there. But let's uh, pull this down. It was 900. Let's just leave it there. So that, that brings it in, guys, at uh, basically, uh, if I just make sure I'll get that right, $3.08, right? Um, and if this thing were to literally just moon up to that 1900 level, uh, then, um, you know, just as that example goes, that would be just under six dollars. Right. So pretty, pretty reasonable stuff. Um, but beyond mm -hmm. that, I saw some other comments in the live chat here, Chris, uh, talking about um, blockchain backer. And he's saying that XRP should be, you know, trading around the two dollar level. Or so two to three dollars, um, you know, if uh, everything was moving with the rest of the alt market. And I totally agree with him on that. It definitely looks like that's how it should have been performing. Um, and where it should have been. So yeah, absolutely think is spot on there. Super. And just talking about things that you know we've we've seen today. So on on Twitter, I've seen lots of people respecting the dump, um, <laughs> which, is, which is you know remarkable. Bear in mind we were respecting the dump yesterday, but it got me thinking we should respect the like button. <laughs> Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. You know, we should respect the button. We should push the like button. We should mash the like button. You know. Just, just my way of thinking. <laughs> I don't know if anybody wants to join me in uh, respecting the like button, uh, but yeah, no, just a, just a, just a joke, really. Fantastic. Um, Hadira Hashgraph, Nick. Um, I, I've seen uh, in response to, to obviously our video, uh, not a video, should I say, our uh, live stream yesterday. Um, people really are more interested in Hadira. I think there's, there's many people interested in various different projects. Um, but have you got? The Hedera chart, Nick. Is it worth having a look to see, sure. see what's going on there? Um, yeah, let me let me pull this up and just grab that. 
Um, so yesterday I had a couple of uh, arrows on here because we were indecisive, but it looks like we've had a bit of a decision, which is good. So green day, right? Mm. So let's pull this into uh, let's pull it into an hourly, see what's actually going on. We can see this trend line that I drew, right, where we were coming through, we we're hitting these lines quite nicely. Uh, there was a couple here that's a little bit of an anomaly, if you will, so a bit of an outlier. Um, but otherwise, everything is pretty pretty good. We obviously had this uh, wedge, this triangular wedge. We've surpassed this, which is great. And that's uh, going really well. If I just pull this over here, we can see another triangular wedge forming. Okay, just up here. Uh, so I'm just going to pull that up a little bit. So you can see that we're here, right? So expect that to potentially bounce up as well. Uh, definitely in an upward trend, right? So we're targeting these levels. And um, so yeah, as we approach this really interesting stuff, Chris, uh, we'll definitely start seeing um, some significant movement um, for for Hadira here. And yeah, it's looking really good. Let's see how this plays out. Um, we should get to the peak of this triangle tomorrow, um, but it could happen. It could come out of here at any point, really. Um, but yeah, I imagine that we're going to surpass this uh, and set some uh, some really high levels here. So yeah, really watch that out for that. And um, well, our, our price target here is uh, 6.2 cents. That's our, our, that price target just immediately below uh, sorry, above that uh, that triangular wedge. Then we've got the 7.5 cents and 8.3. Once we get those out of the way, I'll adjust the um, the Fibonacci retracements and uh, we'll see what else we can see, uh, what the next set of price targets look like, etc. So yeah, it's looking really good at the minute, uh, Chris. It's, uh, yeah, it's looking pretty tidy. Nice one. Okay, so then we've got um, Jimmy really liked the SEAL video earlier today, uh, so I appreciate that. And then King Kenny, yo, 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 cheeky crypto. King Kenny is in the house. Hope you are well. And we are, Nick, aren't we? We're, we're very well today. Enjoying the green day. I normally enjoy the red days more than more than the green days, uh, which, you, you know, for those of you that have been here a while, definitely know this. I do like to dip my hand in my pocket and buy a bit of crypto every day if I can. Um, but not to be. Not in our green day. Um, weak hands tested i think that's uh in in our little uh bear market that we've just had um <laughs> sad times sad times um good video on uh, one harmony i think we must have done one harmony a long time ago <laughs> we, one we probably need to revisit nick that video must have been old <laughs> that must have gone back a while oh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't know, like, I don't want to go back and watch them because it would be cringeworthy, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> clash that like button, King Kenny. Love that. Uh, for any traders out there, IOTA is just after breakout over the 0.44. Uh, big resistance, and if it can keep going, very big upside, not financial advice. That's from John. <laughs> um, my bags are full, uh, and that's Ethereum. And uh, yeah, I've got some Ethereum. I got rid of my play bag just because I was unsure whether it was going up or whether it was going down. It was getting to that point and there was just loads of FUD and I thought it was going to go down because of all the FUD and the fact that it was pretty much 50-50 and it went to the upside. Uh, but it was only a play bag, uh, so I've still got ETH, um, just not that little bit of play money. That's sort of to the side at the minute. I don't really know what to put it into at the moment. Maybe IOTA, who knows? Um, BTC so strong uh, and Ripple XRP is not going well like other old coins. Yeah, but I've got to say it's going to do just fine and dandy in my opinion. Absolutely. I'm trying to be really polite. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, right, I'm just going to move down a little bit because I know that I am like so far... Yeah, you, you're probably better off just keeping it at the bottom. They're so active, Chris. Uh, there's so yeah, many fantastic people I'll... in the live chat with us. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Um, so before I, I go right down to the bottom, we were asked, you know, what are our thoughts on tomorrow being Friday and all at uh, the end of the week? And yeah, I'm uh, looking this forward to it, up. I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, I am looking forward to the end of Friday. But the, the Tether stuff, Nick. So um, what, what are your thoughts on it? Obviously, we're aware that, you know, really nothing should happen tomorrow. It's very unlikely unless something is um, released to the press, which is always a possibility, right? Um, but they're, they're going to, to hand over documentation tomorrow, aren't they? Yeah, ultimately they're handing over documents tomorrow. Um, so 
I don't expect anything major will happen tomorrow, if I'm being brutally honest with you. Uh, it depends on what time they get that those documents, uh, how long it takes them to read all of those documents. Uh, then, obviously, you know, draft up a lawsuit based on those documents, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It takes time, guys. Don't expect anything to happen tomorrow. I'm not expecting anything. Yeah, and I have been doing my reading um, on, on the whole Teva situation. It is an interesting one. Um, yeah, I, I watched a few um, YouTubers talking about the, the Teva situation as well. Um, so, yeah, some some good, some not so good. Okay. But, you know, it is what it is, right? Fantastic. And, and Chris, uh, here's one for you, maybe. But uh, David's uh, super chatted us here. He says, any thoughts on Harmony One price target for 2022? 2022, you know, I love the project. I mean, I haven't even thought that far ahead, to be honest. Um, it, Nick, is it possible to get the chart up for, for one harmony? Yeah, absolutely. I know it's not, yeah. one that, not one that you looked oh, at, but it'll be interesting yeah. to see what, what price points are. Because this is like one that I, I see as like relatively long-term uh, in comparison to, to some of the other projects that I'm involved in. Um, I just kind of feel like a few of the, I mentioned this yesterday actually, didn't I, Nick? A few of the other projects have got to kind of have their day before I think One Harmony is going to start to to sort of get that true momentum that I'm expecting. But it's a fantastic project. Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of textbook a bit really, go, guys. Um, mm. So what I've done is I've put on the Fibonacci retracement that you're pretty much familiar with. Now we have the low point on the 31st of December. We also have a high on the 9th of January. Now, what I mean by textbooks is you can see how it's pretty much riding up and smashing some of these key areas, right? And it's coming down and retracing on them, right? So we obviously have that there, came down, retraced exactly on the 38. Uh, we obviously went up and went no higher, uh, all the, uh, you know, the close uh, was on that 78. So that's a, you know, a clear indicator there. We came back down and we tested the 50% retracement. Uh, and we're on our way back up. So obviously we need to get higher than that 78 in order to really show some uh, bullish momentum. Now I'm just going to go ahead and remove those. Um, so ultimately what we want to do is, uh, you know, really get ahead of that game a little bit. Now it is a longer term play, as Chris is saying here, but in the immediate future, we should be looking at targeting 1.1 cents, 1.5 cents, 2 cents, and 2.3 cents, right? Those are the Fibonacci extension levels for this particular set of data. Now, I'm not sure if there's a trend here. There might be, it's gonna be pretty loose if there is. I think, uh, yeah, it really doesn't count because of what Bitcoin did, it really ruined a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, not really a strong trend to be looking at, but ultimately, um, you know, it's very, very good chart. At least it is looking that way at the moment. We're uh, we're above that 61.8 uh, and we're approaching that 78, which is the key level to get into. Um, so if I throw this down on the four hourly, we can definitely see what's kind of happening here. And this might give us a bigger uh, view on what a trend might look like. So we're gonna just flip that in and yeah, you can argue there's something potentially there. Uh, and let's take that high point and the, yeah, that's good. So that's gonna give us a bit of a cross section to be targeting. Uh, and there's probably a whole host of other things I should be looking at on here, but I'm just gonna do it, try to do it quite quickly for you guys. Um, so I'd imagine that, uh, you know, within the next day or so, we're gonna know whether or not this is coming back down or we're gonna be moving upwards. Um, and obviously if we're not getting above that 78, it's not gonna be too good. But the overall altcoin market is positive, it's bullish. So hopefully that does flip and we break this uh, this downward trend and the upward trend support holds. Um, so we'll take a look at that in the coming days, I guess, and, and really uh, pay attention to it. But as Chris was saying, it's a longer term play for us. It's not something that we tend to to look at that often because we kind of feel you know it's great to have uh, this just sat there in the background, not doing too much uh, for us. Um, but ultimately, the longer term play, it's going to get some significant motion and traction with it, right? Um, yeah, yeah, you know, for, I was going to say, for, for me, this one, like, I'm just staking it. The staking rewards are really good. And, you know, for me, like you, you're saying, Nick, it's a super long term hold. Like, I see this as slightly longer than what I anticipate VeChain being. Um, and, you know, we don't really talk about this particular project that much. Obviously, we've done videos on it. You know, we're invested in it. Um, we think it's a fantastic project, um, and you can see that you know it, it, it's it's undervalued at the moment, 
really when you when you actually like into to the actual project. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to take a bit of time to to get that traction. You know, when we've been talking about um, V chain, um, it kind of got to a point where people were like questioning it really. Um, and I think it'd be the same if we did lots of videos on on One Harmony. Absolutely, yeah. So I'm just trying to scope out and find some good areas of support and resistance uh, on the weekly. Uh, there's a couple there. So I'm just going to go ahead and look at the monthly levels as well and um, see if anything stacks up from a monthly perspective. Um, so nothing truly major. So I'm just going to leave it at that for now. And let's pop it back into this daily view. So you can see that uh, today we're right up against um, resistance here. So we want to try to push through that mm -hmm. the best we can um, and obviously get past uh, that level there. But yeah, One Harmony is a fantastic project. It has a lot of potential. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm really keen to see it kind of progress and hit some of these targets first. I get to see if it gets to 2 cent or, or 2.3 to be exact. Uh, reset the Fibonacci's and see what the, the data is showing us. So I kind of want to get past uh, the August high level, really, uh, and see if we can then start to approach uh, you know this kind of high. Uh, which uh, would have been at three cents. So yeah, really interested to see how it all plays out. Yeah, definitely. Um, Nick, so people talking about XRP, I've just sent a link over to you. Okay, I'll uh, I'll have to see if I can find it. It's the last one. I just I literally just sent it over. Yep. Oh uh, yes, yep. I saw this one earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So look, right, I'm I'm seeing you know XRP could go to zero. <laughs> XRP won't go to zero. Like it just, it just won't go to zero. Like so, I mean, we're still getting announcements of new partnerships with Ripple, right? This is a U.S. issue. Yeah. I don't know how many times I need to say this to, to people. It isn't going to go to zero. No. It just isn't, no. right? So this is another partnership using Ripple Net, which you know they um, use XRP. To, to you know support with liquidity and all that sort of stuff and I don't really want us to, to read through it I just wanted to sort of pull up another another partnership I mean we could talk about XRP till we're blue in the face like I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm, yeah I'm telling, I'm, yeah I'm telling you, I'll tell everyone now it isn't going to zero yeah it just isn't like you know it's up to, to, to people what they choose to do but my positions actually increased in XRP um, you know, since we we had the the SEC, um, you know, news that came out, right, and and the lawsuit and everything. So you know, for me, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. It's brilliant, but like, back it up for me. Yeah, if you're going to say that XRP is going to go to zero, back it up with some substance, because <laughs> I'm not seeing any. Like, you know, I'm happy to have debates with people. That's fine, um, but you know, we we we'll see we we'll see where it goes, right? And, you know, you can. Have some banter with me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but we won't be having banter that way. It'll be the other way. So we're clear. Yeah, you know, we'll just be clear on it. If you're going to call it out, bring some substance to it because I'm not. I'm not seeing any yet. No. Fantastic. Right. <laughs> so rant over. <laughs> yeah, rant over. I won't rant no more. Um, but yeah, like I, I just get a little bit frustrated with it because you know people are. I don't know. Your same people are guilty without an, any trial, well, without any... Well, make the accusations, right? Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, yeah, and, you know, for, for me, I'd rather, you know, you have your position, I have my position. Uh, I'm comfortable with, with my position. Um, I hope that you can live with it when XRP doesn't go to zero, and it does very, very well, which is my thought process on it all. But hey-ho, we will see. Um, okay, I hope tomorrow turns into a, re a big red day. Uh, I want to buy up some more ADA and Zill, and I'm with you on that, Jimmy. Like, I, I hope there's a red day. Uh, I don't mind waiting a little bit. Um, you know, it's all good seeing a green day. You're a little bit more wealthy, right? Um, but I do like to buy my crypto because I want that wealth gap to be, you know, generational wealth. Um, I had a dream last night that I should buy more ADA, not financial advice. <laughs> Love it. Um, uh, can you? Uh, can we have a look at STMX? Um, I think we can, but probably not today. I think what we'll do 
because what we're, we're taking requests now, aren't we? Well, I say we're taking requests, but you know, whenever you guys <laughs> pick a, pick a project, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> take your requests. What do you want? Um, yeah, we'll we take it away. We'll have a look at it, and um, I guess rather than sort of talk through projects that we think are dud, we we you know if we get any good ones, um, we will do a video on it. Um, that's for sure. And I mean, eGold was one of those that one of our viewers mentioned to us, and we were like, before we went live, we were like, we've got to buy this. Like, it's ridiculous. Um, it's just so good. Um, okay. Um, what else we got? Uh, I would be in ADA all the way. I sold my XRP apart from 21 that's in my um, wallet. Um, so that's cool. You know, look, I I don't blame people for, for getting out or wanting to get out of XRP. It's scary, right? Um, and you've got to have conviction in, in your beliefs and be able to live with it going down to, to zero. I don't think it's going to, so I'm quite happy to, to you know, as long as you understand that risk, I guess, and you're comfortable with it, which I am. And I would be, you know, if there was a project, I'd probably go more into to ADA, but I'm already in ADA. I'm, I'm really well, you know, I've diversified in, in the market, 23 projects I'm invested in, uh, and I'm in multiple markets, so this is just one market for me. Um, so we've got all... Or all or ADA and eGold, um, again both fantastic projects. Um, it's difficult. If you had that choice, Nick, what would you go for? A all ADA or ADA and eGold? I'd, I'd definitely do both. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We do like to diversify, don't we? We do. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, if you're going to hold XRP, why not? put it into ADA until the SEC hearing is uh, settled, then go back into XRP before it goes back up. Yeah, it's a valid point. Um, I'm just going to stay where I am. You know, they could, <laughs> settle, they could settle at any point, right? Yeah, so for, for me, I'll, I'll, I'll just, you know, give my, my point on this. I just don't mm. switch. I just keep yeah. what I've got. I bought it for a reason. And I'm just going to keep it there. And, you know, if it does what it needs to do or it doesn't, um, absolutely, um, you know. And it's not like I'm I'm not still making money on on XRP because I bought right at the bottom of the dip. I say right at the bottom, but you know, as close to the bottom as you you know you can get, you know, with a bit of luck. Um, so that's that's increased since then. So I'm still I'm still really comfortable with it. Hmm. Um, and yeah, like I just I don't know, like if I ended up with like ADA or eGold, I just end up staking it and then like it takes time to get it out and move it across and it's all just faff, isn't it? Um oh, you know. Yeah. I got my play money for trading and stuff like that. Absolutely. Uh, and here's a super chat from Peter Chris. He says, uh, ECB, a uh, European bank, uh, has had uh, words on BTC. The old woman, <laughs> I love that, uh, wants uh, <laughs> Bitcoin uh, to be regulated to control all the funny businesses, uh, wondering even if they can, uh, wondering if they even can. And uh, they can put all the regulations they want out there. Sure, they can try to control it. But are they going to be successful is the one thing I always think. Right, it's the same with privacy coins. I imagine they're going to be regulated to hell, but trying to control mm. it, you know, if we start interacting with each other and not using the, you know, the businesses and the, you know, I just, yeah, I, I, I do wonder how they'll do it. Yeah, like, I, I guess how they would do it would be, you know, it, it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, they regulate. If they can't regulate it, they just kill it off, and they kill it off by basically making it impossible to to put money in your bank account from it, for example. Yeah, but then I think people will just evolve to the point of saying, well, we just don't need a bank anymore. Yeah. Because I can yeah. send you Bitcoin, you can send me Bitcoin, I can send you XRP, you can send me XRP. Uh, and I think the world's just, you know, wising up to the nonsense that's out there as well. Um, little yeah. by little. Can you wait four hours for me to send you Bitcoin? Oh, no, now? of course, it'd be far too expensive <laughs> to send Bitcoin as a transaction yeah. and it would take far too long. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, and I'll tell you what, Chris, XRP would do a better job, wouldn't it? Oh, it would. It so would. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we digress. Um, ADA is going to get uh, 
imminent uh what's that imitated immediate sorry uh, <laughs> adoption uh my eyes are terrible um that is uh why it will rocket it's taken BTC a long time to, to start uh, to be institutional investment option. Yeah, um, I don't disagree. Um, I wonder what Cardano's first few deals will be oh, with Africa. Yeah. yeah, again, that's going to be interesting also. <laughs> and Peter sent another super chat. This is hilarious because it's so true. It's funny because it's true. Uh, and we all know it as well. Uh, he says uh, there is uh, more money laundering uh, with normal fiat than Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, they can't even control that. You're right. They're in on it. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's whatever whatever makes them the most money and the most bonuses, right? And um, I, I mentioned I, w- I was watching uh, some of... Uh, the, the crypto channels on on uh, YouTube today around the Tether stuff, and, and you know one of them was talking around you know it's not just fines they pay they have to restructure their bank, like but yeah don't get me wrong there's a there's a head on a stick. <laughs> That's exactly like, it, yeah. <laughs> do, 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 you, do you think the banks really care about the head on the stick oh, who's yeah. probably being paid paid off? They don't give a they don't give a, a rats, do they? They just don't. They really um, don't. And uh, I, this is what I've been thinking about with Ripple and the SEC lawsuit, right? If they're found guilty, and this accounts for uh, Brad Gardinghouse, right? If Brad Gardinghouse is found guilty of the allegations, I'm sure as hell he wouldn't be the uh, CEO any longer, right? Because it's a head on a stick, as Chris is saying there. There's a hefty yeah. fine to pay, and someone has to take the PR hit, and it won't be Ripple. Exactly. Um, worst case scenario. Nobody goes to prison for this stuff. They just don't. It's not bad enough, is it? No. Um, definitely not. Uh, people are boycotting uh, HSBC, and they should have done that years ago. Yeah. Like, you know, there's there's terrible banks, and then there's HSBC, um, <laughs> in my opinion. In my opinion, um, okay. Uh, the whole world expect, uh, except the U- uh, U.S. Will, will no XRP is not a security. Uh, to be honest, uh, U.S. are just extra. <laughs> fact, they are falling apart. China will be the new superpower in the world within the coming years. Uh, I, I agree to, to an extent, Jimmy. I kind of think China already is the new superpower, um, and with the, with Biden coming in. He is literally China's puppet, in my opinion. Um, I don't mean to offend anybody, um, obviously, um, so don't take offense. It's just my opinion. Um, but, you know, it's all linked to Wall Street, and, again, it's all around money, and money makes the world go round, right? Um, uh, why should we wait for the dip to enter ETH? Uh, or should, Sorry, should I wait for the dip um, to enter ETH or buy when it crashes 60%? Um, is ETH going to crash 60%? I'm not not so sure it will, but um, what are your thoughts, Nick? Um, you know, I'm just looking at uh, the chart here for Ethereum, right? So um, I, to be honest with you, I definitely wouldn't be buying it at this particular point. I do feel that you're going to get a better deal. Um, but we are as we're kind of entering this triangular wedge, see... I'd see how the near future plays out, right? Because one thing is for certain, we are potentially shooting up here, right? So uh, I would wonder if we're going to come back down and test any of these zones again. Okay, so I would I would wonder if you know maybe there's an entry point at ten eighty three uh, at some point in this uh, next few days. Uh, but we should be out of this by February. Okay, so we should be in this zone by February, if not higher, uh, reaching the really high point here of sixteen hundred before I reset this Fibonacci. So um yeah i I'd say i generally don't tend to mind so much about buying the dip if um if it sounds really awful i don't, I don't mind buying a dip if i know it's on an upward trend and, it, and things are going to go much higher right we talk about eight thousand dollar ethereum right and uh, would i really mind about the occasional couple of dollars here and there Potentially not. So, you know, I'm mindful that there's a potential to come down and test that 1083 um, dollar zone. But I, would I really mind so much also paying, 
you know, a little bit of an extra premium just to, to get in on the, on the position. So uh, yeah, for me, I'm, I'm not too fast, Chris. It's all looking quite tidy. There's potential opportunity. It is a relatively good green day. I think it's 12% today. So uh, I potentially mm. wouldn't be doing it today. I'd potentially look for a, some kind of opportunity in the next little while um, if I were to get into to Ethereum. Super. And uh, my play money hasn't been going back in. Um... You know, for those very reasons as well. Um, Cardano, uh, Uganda uh, will be the one that the snowball rolling. Interesting. That's from John. Um, yeah. What about the rumors about ADA being a Ponzi scheme uh, coming from <laughs> out of Japan? Um, yeah, I'm not so sure that's accurate. Um, Sharing uh, is one that I've been meaning to look into. So this is the one around travel, isn't it, Nick? Which is uh, there isn't much traveling going on at the moment. Um, I wonder. I wonder what what it, what is it doing, Nick? Because um, you know we, we were like, oh, well, there's no travel at the moment, so we're, we're we won't sort of do any any investment in that one um, for the time being. What's it doing? What's it looking like? I'm just looking for the right um, ticker. Bear with me. Um, sharing it's uh what is the ticker for that it's uh s h r s h r uh but, but, but why can i not oh yeah you share token to usd yeah it's you know what it actually seems to have a bit of like a heartbeat to it <laughs> you know right. burden 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 i'm expecting a pump <laughs> respect the pump chris respect the pump <laughs> uh, so what good is let's throw that on to there you can see that so i'd expect a pump in the near future that looks about the right amount of time um so <laughs> i'm such, yeah. i'm such a skeptical here but you know uh let's say that's 62 days um let's see what this would have been the equivalent of that was only 40 days maybe that's a little bit less see where we are right now um Oh, look, we're around 50 days, 58, it's approaching 60 days. Uh, so, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be expecting a bit of a pump up in a moment. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> just looking at it from a heartbeat in perspective here, guys. I would expect something to happen here. Um, how high might that go? Let's take a, a cheeky look at that. Um, yeah, not all that far. But that's a weak trend anyway. Uh, there isn't really a lot to report. I, I think bad timing with this one, to be fair. Uh, you know, they've had a lot of unfortunate events, shall we say? Yeah. Right. You know, not helpful. Um, but they have been pretty stable since uh, July 2020, as they had the high in uh, late July, August, the crash down, um, you know, September, a rise in uh, later in September, crash back down, another rise in November. Um, no rise in December, so we could expect a, a January rise. Yeah, it is what it is. It's just bad timing. It really is unfortunate for, for the project as a whole. But it doesn't have to be for the investor, right? Like this, you know, it's interesting. I wanted to see sort of how it would do. I mean, there's definitely buying opportunities there. It's definitely undervalued. Um, but I think that's because of the situation that we've got, which I think is going to go on for, for much longer, isn't it? So uh, lockdown till autumn potentially yeah it's it's not going to be uh yeah it's going to be a while fortunately yeah um yeah i'm going to leave been... this on here anyway for, for the next time that sharing comes up i'm really interested to see if we get a pump up like this heartbeat is indicating uh every mm. uh every kind of two months that'll be interesting to see how that plays out yeah i think it could definitely do well i just yeah the circumstances at the moment the lay of the land isn't isn't good isn't it it is it and um it reminds me a bit of the blockbuster situation the time isn't quite right is it no the time is just not right that's that's the only thing it sounds like a fantastic project when we looked at it, it makes sense um great to have everything all in one place and all that kind of jazz um just just unfortunate timing yeah definitely um so google owns youtube that is they correct. sure do <laughs> How you doing? Um, uh, what about MetaMask if you get rid of Google? Not entirely sure. Really don't know. Um, 
where can I buy sharing uh, uh, in the US? Um, it's probably going to be Binance. Um, yeah, I would have thought so. I would have thought, yeah. I always say go to, to CoinGecko. Uh, is it CoinGecko? I think it's CoinGecko. Yeah, it is CoinGecko. That'll it. tell you for yeah, sure. It um, gives you a list. Which um, we can look at because I'm there already. Uh, so... is it, it'll, tell, it'll tell you based on where you're located next. So... Oh, that is true. Yeah. So I can see that yeah. Qcoin, Uniswap, uh, you know, BitThumb, etc. cetera. Um, so Peter's uh, BTC is doing naughty things. Oh, is it? So... It is. It is. It's, it's down to, what, 38 and a half now. It. So it's dropping below that uh, that threshold. That's not what I want to see. <laughs> mm. Um, mm. Oh yeah, so it has. Let's um, let's pull that into the hourly. Let's see what's occurring. Oh yeah. And I'll bring you guys with me. So yeah, so here we are. Right, we're just falling below. So I wonder if there's a an imaginary support in this zone. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. I'm going to watch this. I'll keep this up, guys, and we can just monitor the situation as Chris cool. uh, continues. Yeah, okay. Um, so we've got, yeah, but it's holding right now, so that's cool. Um, anyone holding Dash? So this isn't one that we have at the moment, is it, Nick? Um, Dash. No, it's on our list of things to look at. I know a little bit about it. Um, privacy coin, I believe. Not uh, one that we've looked at yet, though. Super. Is Quant Coin worth checking out? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. It is definitely worth che checking out. And just Sam, uh, it's finally figured out the, the super chat sound that we added. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I heard it and I was like, yeah, I have to have that as that has to be the sound effect for something. I don't care what it is, it has to be a sound effect. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, can you explain positive impact of uh, Gogwin? Uh, we'll have for Cardano. Don't quite understand it, uh, but what? Uh, but from what I have heard, it's good news. What's your thoughts, Nick? Gogwin's incredibly good news. It's good news for so many fantastic reasons. So, um, to start with, let's let's just think about um, what. Cardano is trying to do, right? And what Gogan is designed to do. Gogan is all designed uh, around smart contract functionality, okay? Um, so there's some fantastic things that uh, Cardano and I IOHK, Charles Hoskinson have been working on, such as an ERC20 converter, right? And the idea of that is to take those ERC20 tokens away from something like Ethereum and put them on Cardano. But why would you do that if there's no smart contracts for those ERC20 tokens to actually take advantage of, right? So it's all well and good having that converter, but why would you convert to go over there other than to save a few fees? Um, it enters uh, the smart contract functionality. Once you have the smart contracts there, the ERC20 converter starts to make a lot more sense. And um, so does the, uh, obviously, the Ethereum virtual machine, uh, Yella, uh, the KEVM, all that kind of good stuff that they're doing over there to allow for, you know, the ease of development on Cardano it starts to make a lot more sense when you have Gogan because Gogan basically now embeds all of that smart contract functionality that they just don't have yet. So what we're expecting is uh, basically um, Gogan to, and yeah, I nailed that pronunciation. I nailed it, John. I did. So Gogwen, um, <laughs> I'm just messing with you guys. Um, so yeah, Gogwen is basically going to be an absolutely fantastic uh, marvel in moving things forward. But m marry that with another project called Marlow, where you have a templated system for smart contracts and a way to the races you are with Cardano. So ultimately, um, you start thinking about all of these puzzle pieces slotting together um, in such a way that uh, you know Cardano becomes a true contender, not only against Ethereum, but against most other um, smart contract platforms because they have all the scalability, they have all of the um, smart contract functionality, and they have the ability to take projects directly away from uh, Ethereum with the ERC20 converter. They have the hard fork for Mary that was announced, uh, which basically means any asset can now go on to Cardano uh, without the need of smart contracts or custom code. Um, and um, 
ultimately that the templating and the development languages, right? So they, you can develop for Cardano a smart contract in multiple different languages. It doesn't just have to be Solidity that you get with Ethereum. So it, it's it's just absolutely massive, and I can't really put it into enough words just to, to, to kind of describe just how powerful Cardano becomes when Gogan goes live in March. Um, it, it's going to be absolutely massive, guys. Super, Nick. We're being asked, can we have a look at <laughs> Nano? Uh, Nano, I, I could have a look at that. I messed up the pronunciation of the pronunciation, though, Nick. I did. I, <laughs> uh, I you know, I got so excited talking about Cardano. Um, so we're going to have a look at Nano. What is it that we'd like to know about Nano? Oh, no, let's just take a look at it. Um, it I mean, it looks like a lot of people are selling it rather than buying it at the moment. Could be a good, good, could be a good thing to to buy into. I'm looking at that, but you know, it depends on the project, doesn't it? I don't know anything right, about it actually. I don't know anything about the project, so I just have the chart. Right, we have the high here uh, of the seventh of January, uh, and we have a low down here of the third of January. Looks like it was absolutely nothing, and then became something pretty quickly. Um, so I'm going to just throw this into a uh, daily to start with. Right, Let's zoom in, Let's see what's going on. So lots of uh, nothingness, really, uh, for quite a while. March crash there. A little bit of a leg up. Uh, and then we'll see if this uh, more, um, I guess, uh, meaningful um, movements. OK. I'm just going to readjust this a little bit, get that into a better position. Turns out I already have a Fibonacci on there, so I don't need two. Uh, so I'll pop that about there. There we go, cool. So what we can see is a test on the 68, uh, Fib uh, sorry, 61.8 Fibonacci, which failed. So we tested it yesterday, came back down today. So that's um, interesting. It's, uh, it's resting at the open level uh, here. So that uh, is an area that we wanna be focusing in on uh, just there because uh, we wet our candle close and cloud will open right and we're down at that level right now so we'll see what happens there um so let's go ahead now and throw this into our um hourly right so we can then see a little bit more of what's going on at a deeper granular level um so ultimately yeah it's looking interesting we obviously had some low points down here in the uh between the 23 and the 38 fibonacci so a little bit lower uh, and obviously you can see how it kind of hits these key areas, right, and bounces from them. So really good, strong uh, support level here at that 38 um, Fibonacci level. Uh, we also have good support in here. Um, say good support, but we have had resistance uh, and we have support. That's the 50% Fibonacci level. We obviously recently haven't come as low as that, uh, but we also have some lower um, highs and some lower lows. So a bit disappointing in that recent activity here. Um, so more people are selling, which is interesting. I guess it's because uh, there's potentially quite a few people who have um, been, you know, buying it up at relatively cheap prices in the past. Uh, so we can definitely see a bit of a downward trend in that regard. But uh, let's see uh, if we had a trend anywhere around here. It's definitely not non-existent at the minute. That just doesn't exist. Uh, so we can't even use that. Um, we obviously have our support level here, which we are just tithering on, whether that's going to hold, but this is a triangular wedge. Um, so likelihood is it's probably not going to hold and we could potentially come down and test, uh, most likely, if I'm being honest with you, the 38 level, I have another retest in that zone um, down here. Something in there would probably happen uh, before we might see any upside. Um, but it's some good movement for for the project i have to say but i don't know anything about it i don't know what they're trying to do uh, what problems they are solving but uh, the chart isn't isn't too bad it's it's relatively healthy chris yeah so while you were doing that i was just having a little butchers at their their website and uh, a little flick through their, their white paper uh, it's interesting reading uh, they're into uh, nfts uh, now as well so looking at the the game inside of things but it looks like they they really sort of um, started off looking at the digital payment protocol uh, design, you know, and just trying to make it sort of, I know, more accessible, get rid of some of the flaws and, you know, uh, very much like all the other um, blockchains that are trying to do similar sort of stuff, really. Um, but the NFTs interest me. I haven't I've been able to, to get into it 
properly mm. to, to have a proper look in that space of time you're walking through that chart <laughs> so um but yeah like a scan over it it looks all right um probably one to to, to actually delve into perhaps on the weekend and um do a video and perhaps nick Absolutely. And there's a few others that I've seen in the chat as well that we need to take a look mm -hmm. at. So a Bitcoin Bithash, I think, uh, which has been mentioned a few times um, mm -hmm. during the uh, chat. So that's absolutely something to be, you know, taking a look at for sure. Um, so, yeah, we need to, to obviously take a look at that. Uh, we also need to take a look at a few of these other ones that have cropped up as well. Obviously, Nano is in there. Um, I saw another one, uh, Refinance is in here, Atom's in here. So yeah, we're definitely going to take a look at some of those for sure. Uh, we just have a very, very, very oh, long list. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we obviously need to take a look at that. Uh, and we've had a super chat uh, here. Uh, so he says, hello again, uh, Stella has had an interesting day. Uh, and yeah, I think Stella has had an interesting day. Let's go have a look at the Stella chart, Chris. Yeah. Um, so we'll have a look at that. So um, it's on the hourly, but let's pull it up into the daily to start with and zoom on in. Um, so we are kind of in a zone. Uh, unfortunately, we've actually had a bit of a, a red day, which is frustrating. Um, but let's just make that a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. So we've been trading in between these two, um, one uh, support line and one resistance line. We're actually currently below that uh, support line at the minute, which is really frustrating. We also have these two massive wicks, which is indicating that the market just generally doesn't know what to do. It's swinging massively. And um, from a daily point of view, it just looks like no one is winning here. Um, so really need to pay attention there. Now, the fact that we slipped below that 30 cent level is disappointing. I want to see that get back up there. Uh, I don't want it to be closing below um, below that level, not uh, on uh, on a daily candle. That'd be incredibly disappointing uh, and potentially could see us uh, come down and test lower at the 28.4 cent. Uh, and obviously we had stellar work coming up here. So let's want to stay here. We want to we want to continue the progress that's being made. So let's go ahead and zoom out and just go in at the hourly so we can get a bigger idea of what's actually occurring, right? So fantastic motion and movements up. We're obviously testing the 27.3. We tested that nicely, bounced straight off of there, come back in, unable to attain this level, came back down. And then the uh, 28.4 was uh, basically acting as resistance. You can see the sheer number of hourly candles testing that zone and unable to sustain it until we eventually had the breakthrough. Having that breakthrough sent us not only above that 28.4 cent, but also all the way up to that 30.4. Then we hit resistance at the next level, which is the 30.9. Uh, lots of selling pressure brought us right back down below that 30.4. Um, and then obviously we're testing again. And then we broke through, tested and broke through uh, with a close above that level uh, of the 30.9. Unfortunately, unable to keep it there. So the bears got control and we're there kind of pulling it down, which is really hard to see. But um, hopefully, you know, we're going to be able to get control of this situation and continue that upward motion. Obviously, it's been fantastic progress in this hourly chart from that low point there. Um, and we're kind of right on the cusp of, uh, of an upward trend here on that particular candle. We really don't want it to go any lower. That's going to be really disappointing to see that progress broken. And um, so we really want to, yeah, watch that space, watch those hourlies and, and see if we can get back above that 30 point um, zero four cent level um on stellar super um okay right so we were asked about a few so iota um yeah we looked at in, iota didn't we iota, really liked the project yeah um we haven't we haven't invested yet have we nick no no right not yet um and then we've got uh have you guys covered zen or soul uh, we haven't yet. Um, I don't know. Have we noted those ones down already, Nick? I'm, I'm take a note of them again, just in case. Uh, yeah, but, I'm just so have a look. They don't um, ring a bell with me, but we get so many, so <laughs> that, that probably means nothing. No, they're not on our list, but they are now. <laughs> yeah, they are now. Cool. And then sell, so Celsius, uh, sell token. What are our thoughts? So um, somebody mentioned this to us before, and... Um, hadn't really sort of had that much um i don't know i wasn't using their their app and all that sort of stuff so i thought right i'll transfer some some crypto um into the celsius app 
and start earning some some sell token. Um, yeah, it, it's all right. I quite like it. Um, what are your thoughts on it, Nick? Yeah, I think Celsius is a fantastic concept. The token's great. Um, yeah, I, you know, I like it. I think I like it at the minute. I might not like it in the future. <laughs> um, yeah. But I think that's just because there there's, doesn't seem to be a cap, an upper cap to it. Um, but right now, it seems absolutely fantastic. Super. Um, again, I, I, I kind of want to get a bit more familiar with everything, see what sort of earning potential I can gain from it um, and all that sort of stuff. And then we're definitely going to sort of do a bit of a review, aren't we, Nick? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, super. Right. Um, what have we got here? Um, do you want to pull up the V chain chart, Nick? Yeah, have a look sure. at that. Um, let me... I mean, it was looking bullish. It was looking bullish earlier today. Yeah. So this is what I was kind of envisioning. So when we were last talking, I was thinking, okay, we're going to come up here, potentially come back down and retest, uh, and then off. Right. So we we had that motion. We came up from here, but we haven't come back down. Obviously, it's moving a little bit quicker than I thought. Um, so it's actually better progress than than I was thinking that we were going to have because we actually closed above our. Um, above the resistance line, right? And that was the 2.58, right? Sorry, the 2.57 resistance line. We closed above there. Uh, and right now we're, we're right on it. So again, Bitcoin, uh, as people are pointing out in the live chat, just not helping with the situation of kind of pulling things down a little bit. But ultimately, you know, if we can stay above this line, we're in a good position to move things further forward. We need to get above that 78.6 Fibonacci level. That's the 2.75 cent level, right? If we get above there that you can see it's been acting uh, as uh, you know, an area of support. Uh, we want to get past that and then move up to that high level. Um, and then in doing so, we're going to be hitting our um, our price targets, right? The first price target up here would be 4.3 cents, moving up to that 6.2, uh, 8.1, and 9.3. At least those are the immediate uh, prices that we kind of have scoped out, right? Um, so yeah, really want to see that that play out in a little bit more detail, um, but it is looking interesting. So let's go ahead and throw this into our hourly. Um, and we can see uh, the kind of progress that has been happening uh, in, in here as well. Uh, so from all of this kind of progress here, the, the very unfortunate thing that you can see, right, is you can start really drawing these connections and making them stronger. You can see the exact point when things go kind of to part a little bit, uh, which is frustrating, obviously. But um, over here, if we were to draw something similar, we can see that we're right on the cusp or coming very, very close to um, this area, right? So I'm just gonna make sure that's uh, in the right zone, which is about there. Um, so if I go ahead and just make these candles a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on, and I can just adjust this a little bit. So we have obviously that wick there. Uh, and that look there. So ultimately, you know, we don't want to get into this zone. That's going to be a bearish signal in that triangular wedge if we close in there. So we want to close above the line and hopefully, you know, keep bouncing and moving this thing forward. Uh, I think it's going to have some really interesting times ahead, Chris. Obviously, we speak quite a lot about price predictions for VeChain. It's your biggest investment. Uh, we mm -hmm. have some price targets in our heads. We've seen other people talking about $2 VeChain in 2021. Um, I'm saying, yeah, that's great. I, I, you know, I think it's undervalued anyway, and we're going to see huge potential going forward. Um, but I personally am just thinking, let's get to 50 cents and, and see how that looks, right? Um, I still think we have a shot at the $1, um, but I'm just trying to say, let's get to the 50 cents and see how things are playing out by that point. Um, and 50 cents kind of brings us all the way into this zone here, right? Uh, gaining 47 cents. It's a massive potential, right? It's a 40, uh, sorry, 2,144% growth um, from the position when I actually drew that out, which is different now. But, uh, you know, I think there's um, huge potential for VeChain. They're doing absolutely fantastic work. Uh, obviously, the uh, only in the world, the only five star uh, approved. Um, you know, blockchain provider uh, in the world from Turf, and that's uh, that's absolutely massive in itself. And yeah, I think the potential for VeChain is massive, Chris. Yeah, and we've been talking about this one for so long, and it really wasn't doing anything. I think you know, it's it's one of those projects that we we always knew was going to take a while to to start moving and, and building traction. But you know, from when when we were talking about it to, to now, 
like the amount of like chat on on Twitter and stuff is is immense now. Um, every, it's almost every every other sort of thread that I look at is is you know V chain, particularly today, because obviously it, it was looking really bullish earlier today. Fantastic. Super. Okay, so um, we think we're about an hour and ten in. We're we'll answer a couple more, and then I think it's probably about time to to sort of bring the the stream to an end so we can start recording for, for tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing to some comments, Chris, because uh, we see screw in the tuna. He, I broke my little toe. It hurts. Uh, is there a crypto that can help with that? <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Not not that you hurt your toe, but br brilliant comment. Um, right. What else have we got here? So many good projects. Completely agree with that. Um, v chain potentially being manipulated. Well, I mean, I, I've quite often said that uh, all of the projects are being manipulated. The whole market's manipulated. Several markets are manipulated. Uh, JP Morgan obviously had that admission of manipulating the bond market recently. Um, you know, we've we've highlighted the amounts of fines that um, the banks have, have, have you know had to pay when uh, manipulating markets and, and all that sort of uh, lovely stuff. So, yeah, um, I wouldn't be shocked by any stretch of the imagination if there is, um, you know, manipulation going on, um, you know, and I think Tether might be one of the, the first to, to potentially get caught for doing it. Um, but, you know, we'll we see how it, how it all goes right. Um, and then there was one other, you know, uh, what's your biggest uh, investment? So... For me, it's property. Um, I do like metals as well. Um, and so, yeah, property, crypto, metals at the minute as it stands uh, for me. Um, Trump won Biden uh, for Gitmo. Not sure what that means. Uh, everything is manipulated. Completely agree. Uh, Grayscale added uh, Zen. Uh, don't know if you caught that. No, didn't see that. So that would be one definitely worth taking a look at yeah, um, sure. crypto <laughs> so laughing to myself and all of the, the stuff crypto, going on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love it fantastic so uh, i think that's going to bring an end to the stream chris uh, so fantastic yeah. one again this evening so hopefully you guys have enjoyed it uh, if you have definitely do go ahead and smash that like button on the way out uh, chris really appreciates it i really appreciate it and i like to think they all uh, that you all really appreciate it too uh, and with that said also if you're not subscribed yet do go ahead and subscribe to the channel by subscribing you will be kept up to date with all of the videos and live streams that we do here at cheeky crypto and with that said we hope you have a fantastic day guys and we'll catch you all in the next one yeah take care